Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install a, a Kubernetes cluster on your local machine so you can deploy the full Zenko stack uh, just right off your laptop. So there's there's a few dependencies in order to get this to work. Um, yeah, you need kubectl cube as you can see here, uh, minikube, uh, which actually runs on, uh, by default, runs on VirtualBox, and then Helm, which is the Kubernetes package manager. So let's go ahead and get these dependencies installed and and get us up and running. So kubectl, we could easily just curl from from here. Let's see here. kubectl, let's curl that. And then let's see here. Let's go ahead and get minikube installed. And you could, for this one, if you have brew installed, you could either use the For this one, if you if you have a Mac, you can use brew and do the brew cask install minikube. If you have Linux, you can just do the curl of the binary. Um, both work just the same. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and curl the binary. Let's see here, minikube. Let's put that into yeah, user local bin. And all these are commands you can copy and paste directly from the, the GitHub pages. So we got kubectl, we have uh, minikube, let's test out those binaries, make sure they're installed correctly. So minikube, cool, kubectl, cool, both of them are installed. Uh, we will need helm as well. Let's close this out. And we have the binary there downloaded. Uh, let's go ahead and download VirtualBox as well. Okay, well, VirtualBox is downloading. Let's go ahead and install the Helm binary, which is the package manager for Kubernetes. Let's see here. Installed. Let's move this back over here. So we downloaded VirtualBox. Let's install VirtualBox. Okay, let's go through the installer. It's basically a next, next, next. Oh, it looks like I already have VirtualBox installed with the uh, VM running, but you get the idea with that one. So let's go ahead. Once VirtualBox is installed, from here, yeah, we could do the Minikube start. So the good good thing about the Minikube command is it allows you to start uh, a Kubernetes cluster uh, based off whatever version you need. Uh, they have specific versions that they support. So if I put in a bad version here, it'll show me the versions that it does support. But for the most part, you can get just about all the main versions that have been released uh, up to the latest 1.10. And then 
the other cool thing is that you can actually specify how much memory usage uh, uh, or how much memory you want to allocate to the to the VM handling the cluster, and and that way uh, you could limit it or uh, or give it as much as you need uh, as far as memory memory goes. Um, but let's go ahead and just do the defaults here. The default memory uh, for the VM is two gigabytes. So it, it kind of depends on on your internet connection as well because it has to download this this image, but it, it could take a couple minutes for it to completely uh, get get downloaded and running. Cool. So we could check it now that it's done. Any cube status correctly configured. There's the IP address. Minikube's running, the cluster is running. And then now let's do the Minikube add-on enable ingress here. And what this is going to do is it's going to set up a, a service on your cluster that allows, uh, it basically sets up a configuration that allows access externally into the cluster. And it's it's what's called a config map, and it also installs a service that'll also handle uh, uh, requests, uh, all the requests coming in. Oh, yes. Cool. And then once once we add up the ingress, what we could do is start Helm, and what you do is type in helm init and then I like to add a dash dash wait and what this will do is it'll initialize your helm service on your cluster um, that that the helm that allows for the helm package manager to interface with and so the dash dash wait flag is basically waiting for that service to come up and and be fully ready on your on your cluster uh, some older versions of helm uh, I know they they don't support this. This is actually a fairly new feature uh, in Helm. So if you have a, any errors uh, regarding to regarding this dash dash wait flag, go ahead and just take it off, and and you can just do Helm in it, and it'll, it'll, it should work just the same. So now that we have Helm initialized, let's go ahead and clone Zenko. Let's go into the charts directory, and so there's there's a couple things you want to do to get all the Helm packages uh, set up and, and ready for install. So we want to do the Helm repo add, and this is going to pull down our our specific Zenko Zookeeper uh, Helm package. And then once we get that, let's we'll do a dependency build, and this will. Uh, get all the dependencies uh, downloaded and set up uh, locally so that way whenever you do a install uh, it's just ready to go so let's do we can do helm install and in my specific uh, instance I don't have uh, R RBAC which is uh, role, role based access control so, uh, which are just basically advanced features that, that are available. But in this case, we don't need it uh, just for testing purposes. I'm going to go ahead and set it to false, just like we have it here in the instructions. So I'm going to Helm install, and my the name of my deployment is going to be Zanko, as you can see here. And then I'm pointing it into the Zanko folder, and that's... That's basically it. You hit enter, and it's gonna install the the full cluster. You, you'll have Backbeat, Cloud Server, Prometheus, uh, Redis, um, Kafka, Zookeeper, uh, MongoDB, and you'll have all that uh, basically preparing as soon as you hit the the install command. And from here. Let's do kubectl 
YouTube CTR get all. And you can see all the services, all the pods, everything, everything running in this cluster. Uh, right now, uh, you can see that it's doing uh, container creation on all these, on all these uh, pods. And basically, it's what it's doing is downloading the Docker images and it's deploying them. So uh, that you know also takes a couple minutes depending on internet connection. Um, but the but basically it'll it'll self self stabilize after uh, a, a few minutes. Uh, just again depending on on your internet speed. So another cool command, minikube command, is minikube dashboard and what this will do is it'll go ahead and open up your kubernetes cluster dashboard uh, right in your browser in your default browser you'll see this load up and you'll see the status of the current pods services deployments everything everything that's uh, set up on the kubernetes cluster in this case all of the zenko services all the zenko uh, replica sets and the pods and things like that and so you can see that it's currently uh, deploying it's currently pending status uh, just because I am on Wi-Fi and it's not the fastest internet so as you can see we have everything up and running and uh, once this stabilizes we could do orbit registration and test out uh, CRR and uh, replication and uh, one-to-many type of type of stuff